This is going to be a pretty boring remake of a five-year-old video. We've re recently got some complaints that this video is not very good, so I'm going to attempt to remake it for you without losing my mind. This video is going to teach you the most basic parts of using Cheat Engine. The first thing you always do in every game is you want to find the health address. You're going to track back from the health address to the local player object and get its address. And then you're going to find a pointer to the health and the local player object. And then maybe we're going to find some weapon ammo as well and just explain you the very basics. So first thing. In Assault Cube, you can't, when you first start the game, you're in a demo map. You're not actually playing the game. So you cannot use that and expect the addresses and offsets in the demo map to work in the real game. So to start a real game, you would go to single player and create a bot match, okay? Once you've entered one of these bot matches, you can continue this tutorial. So you want to be in a map where it's easy to get a grenade like this one. And what we're going to do is we're going to search for our health which is probably a four byte integer. So we're going to start with that. So these are all the addresses that re represent uh, addresses which contain the value 100 as a four byte integer. So we are going to reduce our health by hurting ourselves with the grenade. We now have 45 as health. So we're going to filter these results. And now we have our address. We double click it and we add it to our cheat table. So this is the address of our health variable. Okay, now we want to see does this thing work so let's set it to 9999 and let's grab a, another grenade and we are going to hurt ourselves again and see what our health turns into okay it's 9938 again so this is our actual health address if we did that and our health was shot down to like less than 100 then that would mean we had found a visual health value that's the one that's used for the graphical in graphical user interface the GUI okay but in this case 9938 this is our real health address so anytime you want to find a pointer to I'm sorry anytime you want to find an empty object the health variable is probably in it so this is just defined in C as a class it's a player a local player a client in this case the structure is called an uh, an entity. So the class that represents our local player is an entity object. So we have the health address, which is probably inside of the entity object. Now, how does the CPU and the assembly code access the health address? Well, it knows some there's some function with an instruction that changes your health. And it's done by getting the address of the entity object and then indexing into the health variable by using the health offset. Your compiler, when you write your code and hit the compile button, the compiler figures that all out for you. Now, when you're reversing this with using Cheat Engine, it's, it's actually very simple. We're going to right click the health address and we have two choices. Find out what accesses this address and finds out what writes to this address. One of these has overlapping results and one only has singular results. I believe if you do find out what accesses, it'll give you a list of all instructions which read and write to the health address. If you just do writes, it only shows you the ones that write to it. So, and how does this work? This is actually just a read or a write breakpoint, which is just built into the way uh, that the debugger works on, on Windows. So let's right click on this and do finds out what accesses. Sometimes you have to do both. Sometimes you're not going to find your result in just one and you need to do the other one. But let's just do find out what accesses to start. This is going to attach the Windows debugger to the process and set that breakpoint. And what we get here is a list of instructions which access that health address. And we can see the count. It's currently, this is just part of the main game loop, okay? Now we can get a more, it's probably being updated and accessed throughout you know every single frame of the game now to get a more specific instruction which acts directly um which executes directly when we're getting hit by something we can throw another grenade so we can stop this now and i'll stop the breakpoint so these two instructions access our thing only when we hurt ourselves and these get executed every tick now you'll see three of these are very similar you have a register plus F8 in hex. So F8 represents our offset. Now, when you see this, 
it will not be like that in every game. Like right here, you see EBX plus four. So you can't just look at this and go, okay, the offset's four. You, you, need to you need to form a hypothesis, you need to test your hypothesis, and you need to experiment and use trial and error, and that's how you're gonna solve all your problems in game hacking. This is a really key skill here. We have a lot of people on the forum who they get to this part of the tutorial and then they come asking us for help. You have to have the initiative, the intuition, and the ability to deduce what's happening given the information you're provided. You have to take the context of what you're looking at and apply everything you know about solving problems and about how coding and a computer works and you have to use these things to make yourself successful. I can't do it for you. So our offset is F8. I know that, but if you're just doing this, you may not know it. But you have three instructions that are all accessing it via F8. Let's try doing find out what writes and let's see if we get any different instructions. I don't think we will though. Let's try it. Yeah, we already got this one right here. So nothing new there, that's fine. So so these two are reads, and these this is a write, and then this is a read, okay? Because we're moving the address of the health variable into EX, moving it into EX, and in this one, we're subtracting the health uh, EDI from the health address. So if you, let's just do this bottom one here. If we look at F8, we see that uh, it's ESI plus F8. Now, ESI is going to be the address of the entity object. We don't know that, but that is typically the case in most games. And as you get more experience, you'll come to understand this and you'll know what you're looking at. Again, you have to look at what you're looking at, take it at face value, and if later you have a problem, you then need to revisit your hypothesis and continue to create more experiments to test it until you get in full understanding of exactly how the game is built. So let's look at ESI, let's grab that address and let's add an address manually and paste that in and we're gonna call this entity object address. So what is an object? An object is an instance of a class. If you're coding and programming, you create a class which just defines what an object of that class will contain, what its structure will be and what functions can act on it. So when you find a class in memory, it's, it's called an object. Now we've added that address of our entity object here, and then we get this weird value. Well, this value, it's just reading the value which is at offset zero of that object, which is not important to us right now. So the next thing you might do is, let's take a look at this, the structure of this object. So let's grab that address. Let's go to memory view. So we go to tools, dissect data structures, and we're gonna paste in the address. You click structures, define new structure, and we're just gonna call this entity and just use all the default settings. So what this does is it gives you a list of all the variables that, are, that start at that address. So you can think of all this information here is part of the class of the object that we're looking at, which is the entity. So at offset zero, we, we have a pointer then we have two floats, three floats, and some integers. Now these variable types are guessed. Uh, Cheat Engine has an auto guess ability, which tries to use the context of the variables to decide what they might be. It will not always be correct, so you can only use it as a guide. You can find a lot of good information by looking at this. So I see one, two, three floats in a row, so that probably represents our coordinates. If we jump, we see the 4.5 turns into a six point something and a seven point something. So that's our Z coordinate. If we move around, the other two floats move. So we could add that to our table. This is our, our vector of coordinates, X, Y, and Z. And we can keep looking down here and the offset is listed on the left. So if we go all the way down to the bottom here where F8 is, we can see that here's our health, 9761. I can see what looks like my ammo here. This is probably ammo for the different guns that we have. I see a 16, and that's at offset 150. And that's the ammo in our current magazine. And if we reload, we our ammo that we're holding in reserve is now 35. So that's our ammo in reserve 35 at offset 128. So something we can do 
just to show you how this all works is let's take our entity object address and let's add we want to add a address for our ammo so let's just call this uh, assault rifle ammo mag address and we can paste in our the address of our entity object and then we can add the offset i think it was 140 i forget what it was so we had a 20 that was offset 150 not 140. so if we do like that we have our entity object address plus the offset which equals the address of the ammo in our magazine we can change that to 999 if we want and we can see that it works next step we want to find a pointer to our entity object. The reason why is because everything is created dynamically in video games to be efficient. A static address is one that is always relative um, to a module, and that module is always loaded into the same place. So let's take a look at that. So we want to find a pointer to our entity object. What's a pointer? It's just an address which contains another address. Effectively, it points to another address. So we're going to do a new scan and we're going to use hex because the address we're going to paste it in is using hex notation. And we're going to do a scan. Now, everything on the left hand side here, these are all variables which contain the address of our entity object. So effectively, these are all pointers. These green addresses are static addresses. Let's add the first three to the table and let's just double click them. You're going to see that these have a relative address and a module name. So acclient.exe is a module that gets loaded into memory when the process is created. It gets mapped into memory by the Windows OS loader. Each address, each module in memory is loaded at a specific address at runtime. If you take that specific address and you add this relative offset, you get the address of a pointer which points to our entity object. So what is the address of acclient.exe? I'm going to show you a quick way we can look at that just for like a quickie, just a little explanation. So we go to our memory viewer, uh, dissect PE headers, and these are the different modules that are loaded in memory. We want acclient.exe. If you click info, it will load the information. So its address is currently uh, this address here. Now this is very common because this is the default image base for all executables. Now, many executables now use different parts of the Windows uh, security system like address space layout randomization, which will randomize this address. Um, but in this case, that is disabled on Assault Cube, and this is given as its default image base. There are multiple headers for the PE header, the MZ header, which is just a leftover from DOS, and then the PE header. So in the PE header, which is the portable executable file format, it has a header which contains a table of all the things that are going to be loaded, okay? And if we scroll down here, it has a bunch of interesting information, the entry point of the code, the base of the data, and the preferred image base. So the preferred image base is where this module would like to load if that spot is free. Now, it's not always free. In case this was a DLL, if this address is not free, it will load anywhere that the operating system has space in the virtual memory. But this is just a quick way, if you're wondering how you find that, that's where it is. Once you follow the rest of the Beginner Start Here Guide to Game Hacking, you will learn all about that. Okay, back to our pointer. So, our green addresses, these are all addresses which are relative, they use relative offsets to a module base address, which gets loaded into a static address. If we double click these next two and look at these, we just have an address. So this is just a dynamic address. It's not offset from any module. So this is something that's probably on the heap, or maybe it's al it's allocated by the keyword new in C, or something like that. So what this is saying right here is these three green addresses are going to be the same. The variable is going to be in the same address each time you restart the game. But these are all dynamic, and they do not necessarily have to contain the same variable when you restart the game. So your goal when finding a pointer 
is to trace backwards until you get a static address. In this case, we already have three. So this is a multi-level pointer, but it's it's only a one-level pointer. It's an it's a pointer that points to our entity object. One level, no offsets, just a relative address. So let's delete these two that we just added. Those were dynamic. And let's just look at these. So we have AC client plus 109B74. And we have AC client plus 10F4F4. And then we have AC client plus 11E20C. So which one is the right one? We don't know. So in order to test this, you would, when, whenever you're researching and reversing and hacking a game, you're going to be spending months on it. So again, I'm going to find more, form a hypothesis. I'm going to add these to our cheat table, and I'm going to say these always point to the correct address. And I'm going to save this cheat table, and I'm going to use it for the next month. If they stop working, then I'm going to reevaluate my hypothesis because it's no longer been proven to be true. For the sake of this video and not making a three hour long introduction, I know this last one is not the one we want. These two, both of these addresses point to our local player object, so you can use either of them. Now, I would recommend that you use the second one, which is 10F4F4. The reason I say this is because the reason I say to use this offset is because at offset F8, you can find the entity list. And if you look at the source code for the game, you can find the local entity object pointer and the entity list pointer are defined right after each other, one after the next. So that leads me to believe that this is the most logical pointer. So I'm going to delete this other one and we're going to call this the local entity pointer. And when I say a logical pointer, you could all a pointer does is just point to another address. You could have an address with just random memory in it, which happens to represent the same address of your local entity object. So this pointer is not logically defined by the game logic, but it's still a valid pointer in memory. That's where you need to be careful. You may find things like that that don't follow the game logic, and that will get into trouble as you continue to learn all this stuff. So your goal when dealing with pointers is to find the one that, that uses the logical path of the game. How do you find that logical path? Well, you do find out what writes and what accesses, and then you get the proper offsets. The assembly code that the compiler created is accessing them via a specific path and a specific series of offsets, then you know that that's the logic that the game uses. You will learn in a later video how to use the pointer scanner, and that brute forces them. And you'll run into the same problem where you get thousands of like false positives, but you want to use the one that's most logical. So now we have the local entity pointer, and we're going to actually define a pointer in cheat engine in the cheat engine table. So grab this, copy that, add address manually, and select pointer. So this address down here is the base gist of the pointer. This is where the pointer chain begins. This is the first address, and it's a static address. In this case, it's relative to acclient.exe. That's the module name, and this is the relative offset. So when you add these two numbers together, you get an address, which is a pointer. When you dereference that pointer, it points to this address. So this address is not these two numbers together, added together. It's not the sum. It's these two numbers added together and then dereference, following this pointer to get to this address. And you can see this address is the one we found for entity object address. So we're dereferencing our pointer. Once it's dereferenced, we're going to add our offset, which is F8. And now, if we click OK, we can see it holds 9761, which is our health. So we can call this the health pointer. We can change this to 666, and it works. So this is our health pointer, and this is our local entity pointer. Let's look at this one more time because people always get confused. Here's a module address, which is at a static address. We add our relative offset, and now we are at an address, which is a pointer. We dereference that pointer, and it gives us this address. We take that address, and you can see it right here, 
and then we add F8 to it. So this address plus F8 equals this address. You can see the syntax here, the dash and then the caret is a dereference and a plus and an equal is just an addition and an equal. So this is the sum. So don't get those two confused. And I know this might seem super confusing, even though this is very simple for me, it might be very complicated for you. You are gonna learn this all over the next six months as you get experience. So just take one step at a time and just focus on learning. If you don't understand this 100%, do the next couple videos. If you get three or four videos in and you're still lacking um, like a solid understanding, go back and start again. And what you wanna do is in the meantime, you wanna be practicing these things on a salt cube. So just to test this, let's close the salt cube and let's reopen it. So we're gonna keep the address list and code list. And we are currently in the demo map, which it does work, but we don't wanna use it in this case. So let's go to single deathmatch. Okay, and then let's see. So these three addresses, these were all dynamic. So all of these no longer work, right? The entity object is created dynamically and the game keeps track of that dynamic address using the pointer. Now, this local entity pointer, it still points to the correct address because this is a static address because we can see the module, okay? So that's it. You've just learned the absolute basics of finding entity objects health addresses, pointers, and you've learned about dynamic memory, static pointers, and that kind of thing. This is the basis of everything you're gonna be doing in game hack. If you don't understand it, give it some time, do some practice, read some threads, watch some other tutorials, and it will come to you. Some people take six months to learn how a pointer works. Sometimes that's just how long it takes because it's kind of an abstract concept for someone who's just getting into this. I wish you all the best of luck. The most important thing you need to do is to practice. You need to work hard and you need to be patient. And you really need to just pay attention what people say in tutorials and guides and you need to take them very seriously because I can't make you learn these things. I can't implant my experience and my knowledge into your brain. You have to earn that for yourself. There's absolutely nothing I can do to force you to learn correctly. So it is up to you. Your journey is just beginning. Godspeed.